So I already took the bottom screws out here and uh, immediately we can see not very much, but well, we see a couple of things like uh, right down here we see some sort of either programming or test port and up here we see a horrible soldering job. I mean, I know this is going to be lead free, but take a look at that. That's just disgusting. I'm not sure what happened there, but there's all kinds of stuff all over the board. And like I said, the, the solder joints, they, they look pretty bad. And uh, there are fingerprints all over it. I swear they are not mine. And that's really something I would have not expected from Blackmagic Design. Usually their quality is, is really high. Uh, you can see clearly here, that's where the FPGA is going to be located. Um, but let's stop guessing, let's take it apart, and let's have a look underneath. And here we go. So we see the open board right over here, and here you see the plastic case. This is the slot where the solid state drive goes in. This is obviously where the battery is hidden. I'm going to have a closer look at this battery here in a little bit because, like I said, the, the battery life is, is really, really low. So we're going to measure the current consumption and have a look at this battery more in particular. But let me strap on the uh, uh, close-up lens here, the magnifying lens, real quick, and then let's have a look around on the board. Now I have my time stand macro lens hooked up to the camera and that will allow us to zoom in much further into the board than we could otherwise. And uh, let's, let's just look at this general overview. Like I said, there's not much interesting stuff on here, really. Uh, up here, you have a USB connector, obviously, and uh, right next to it are the SDI in and SDI out. And it looks like they had a provision right here for another port, and it, and it goes to, to something down here. So uh, that may be an option for something else, uh, or they decided to get rid of it. Uh, who knows what that was. We have our HDMI ins and outs, uh, we have our uh, external power in, and as you can tell by the uh, big inductors here, all this is, is likely going to be your, your power regulation and your charging circuit and all that good stuff. Then uh, we have the, uh, the uh, slot here for the SSD drive for power and uh, uh, serial ATA, like I expected. There's a, a Spartan FPGA, of course it's memory couple of clock sources, you got a battery right here, and uh, what we thought was our, um, uh, like as what I suspected to be a programming port indeed seems to go to this little flash device here, and that looks down here like there was a provision for something else, I'm not sure, what do we have there, one, two, three, four, five, so it's more than USB it appears, well, maybe USB 3.0, I don't know, but it looks like this was a intended to fit a USB jack and uh, here's some sort of chip missing that would probably be the controller for that. It would be interesting to probe around here and see if that was some sort of debug for the uh, development and if we can get anything interesting out of it. Okay, so I repositioned the camera a little bit to get a better close-up view. Seems like our flash chip down here is an FL32 PIF. So it's gonna be likely a 32 kilobyte uh, flash memory of some sort. Over there we get our programming port for that. Then uh, let's zoom out a little bit so that we can get a general overview again. So up there is our Spartan 6. It's, uh, that's a really nice FPGA. And I assume that's the thing that gets so hot in there. And we got a little bit of memory right next to it. And then down here, move this a little bit. It's kind of tough since it's still connected and I don't, I don't want to disconnect the little flex cable there because it may be a pain in the rear to uh, reattach it. So bear with me on the camera work here. So here, oh, that's, a, that's a Cypress ship it appears, and if I'm not mistaken, this is actually a USB controller. So it's kind of interesting that it's located right there instead of uh, back where the USB port is, but uh, that is a USB controller, trust me on that. and. Uh, Let's see what else we have. There was another interesting chip right here. And oh, that's an analog device, 9393. That is an HDMI receiver. Now that's kind of interesting that um, they're using a dedicated HDMI receiver instead of doing that in the FPGA. Um, you would think that the FPGA would have enough horsepower for that, but apparently it doesn't. Very interesting. 
you know, maybe they just uh, ran out of cells in their logic cells or the heating problem got even bigger without it. So they uh, put in a little HDMI receiver and I think they junk sheep too. So it really doesn't make much of a difference. And uh, here's our SDI in and out. I do not know those chips, but they're going to have something to do with the, with the clocking of the SDI. There's a, a Silicon Labs oscillator, probably something custom of some sort. And uh, we got a fixed crystal, one over there, and one down there, 24 megahertz. Okay, very nice. So this side looks pretty nice, very decent, and solder job, job looks nice, the layout looks nice, all looks very nice. So uh, totally uh, contrary to the crappy job they had on the other side. This down here is the battery connector, by the way. And uh, that's the next thing we're going to have a look at. I'm going to take this uh, case apart here. I'm going to take this uh, plastic part in here out so that we can have a uh, closer look at the battery and its capacity. All right, let me get in there. Okay, it pushes out. Very interesting. All right, there we have a battery. It's a 7.4 volt battery, 1,200 milliamp hours. That surely doesn't seem like much. It really doesn't. But uh, to see how much that really is and how it translates to operating time, I suggest we're going to move over to one of my oscilloscopes and we're going to put a current clamp on here, switch this thing on and we're gonna figure out how much current it really draws. Okay, so here's my test setup. I pulled the battery out of the case and just uh, put it next to the box here. I put in my Kingston solid state drive here. Uh, I hooked up the HDMI cable coming directly out of this camera and I hit the record button. As you can see, it is recording. And then I'm using this uh, Tektronix TCP30A current probe. It's a current probe that's capable of measuring both AC and DC. So uh, since we're mostly expecting DC here, uh, that's what we're going to be looking at. Now here on the MDO4000, you see the power there. So it looks a little bit dirty, but what is important to us is going to be this. So. What are we looking at here? We're looking at a mean of about 840 milliamps. We're looking at a max of about 1 amp. And we're looking at a minimum of 640 milliamps. So if we look at our mean here, um, around 850 milliamps, and if we remember that our battery has a capacity of 1,200 milliamp hours, we see that we're not really getting all too much. So at the latest, after one and a half hours, uh, this thing is dead while it's recording. and this is really, really not a whole lot. I don't think it, it's, it's, uh, it's enough for the money you're paying for it. So if I now hit stop, so now it is in standby mode. So let's see how our voltages change there. So now we have a uh, mean of uh, somewhere around 600 milliamp hours. So even that would only give us uh, two hours of uh, battery time. And now let's try playback. Playback gives us that's about the same as recording, so uh, one and a half hours. And this is really not a lot. I, I would have not expected this from a high quality Blackmagic product. This really disappoints me. However, I'll probably go on the internet and see if I can find a replacement battery uh, to mod this to have a longer battery life. I mean, the other option is to run it off, uh, off, a, off the uh, wall war charger, but uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of a mobile recorder. But anyhow, there you have it. That was a quick look at the uh, Blackmagic Hyperdeck shuttle. Quick look inside, and uh, like I expected, there isn't really much to it. An FPGA and a little bit of uh, surrounding circuitry, and that's all. Okay, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please share it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.